Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today we're going to be checking out and showing you how to install the Optronics Thin Line LED clearance and side marker lights. Whenever you're redoing trailer lights, um, you know, if it were me and you're going to go through the trouble, uh, there's no question I would definitely upgrade to an LED like this one here over the traditional style incandescent bulbs. Um, LEDs, I mean, it's just uh, you know they're much better nowadays than them incandescent type bulbs and i think that's kind of the standard now you look at all the new cars on the road and everything they're all set up like this and that's because these leds they are super bright um i mean even in a lit up bay i can hardly look at this thing for more than a second or two it really throws off some light there's three leds in there these things run a lot cooler they don't um take nearly uh as much amperage as an incandescent bulb so that's always a bonus too. And they just last a lot longer. You know, they're not gonna have that brittle filament in there like your, your incandescent bulb does that'll burn out. So these are, these are just, they'll take abuse a lot better. You know, you're hitting bumps and stuff on the trailer. They're just not gonna fall apart like uh, an incandescent light would. So you're probably wondering if this is gonna work with your setup and just to go over a few measurements. So uh, as far as how wide the light is, it's gonna be two and a half inches wide an inch and three sixteenths tall and the thickness or the height of it i guess you could say is going to be about seven eighths of an inch so pretty standard size you know these aren't uh these are these are really common lights you know you see them on a lot of different applications um, the back of it this is the type of connector plugs it has so one will be power one will be ground um, and there's all different types of plugs you can use that we carry so you have one like this that'll plug in and obviously you got your power and ground you've got some single ones like this if you're using a self-grounding type housing like we are here today um, this port part prong will plug into the housing and, and provide the ground that way so you know i usually just end up going with direct replacement whatever was on the trailer before that you knew it worked uh, but it's not a bad idea to upgrade or, or I'm sorry replace all them other components too while you're at it just so everything's new you know while you're in there uh, the light though is submersible so you know like on a boat trailer you don't have really nothing to sweat there uh, I do suggest so before pulling it you know backing it up into the water to just turn the power off uh, just to be on the safe side so while these are the uh, red, you know, they're completely red, um, there's also amber colored ones. Uh, I know there's lights out there that have clear lenses with red lights, clear lenses with amber colored lights, and uh, just about any combination you would want, want really. So, uh, you know, you should be able to find what you're looking for. And if you like the clear lens better, you know, if you got a white trailer or something, that's always an option for you. But Really, at the end of the day, you know, that's about it. It's a good uh, replacement or even upgrade from that incandescent type bulb. Uh, as far as getting it installed, I mean, not really much to it. It plugs in, but uh, we went ahead and just redid everything here, our light, our housing, and our wiring. So I feel like most people, uh, that's, that's what they want to see. So that's what we did. And if that's something you want to check out, uh, feel free to hang around. We'll go ahead and do that together now. To begin our installation, first things first, we need to remove all the old stuff. So with our light, take a flathead screwdriver and you just pry that out. And obviously we'll just connect it there and push that wire out of the way. And then we will remove our old housing. So this one is riveted in. And with these, you just drill out the center. So take a drill bit, just big enough. Drill them out. And we can get this old stuff removed here. Now we can get our new housing installed. Um, so with these, I like to use rivets to secure them. I would imagine you could use a nut and a bolt if you wanted to or a screw, but I'm using the rivets. Um, and since uh, if your frame, if the frame of your trailer is metal, 
when you screw this in, this will ground it to the frame and you'll be good. Since ours is fiberglass here, we have to do something a little bit different. We actually have a ground wire with a ring terminal on it that is connected to the metal part of her frame. And you could either run this through the hole like that and, and rivet it there, or uh, so we don't have a lot of room, so I'm actually gonna do it on the back side. So for example, our rivet will push through. If I can get it through here, it's pretty tight, which is a good thing. So if you can imagine this, will go through the fiberglass and rivet it on, and then this wire will be on the back side of it. And whenever you huck this rivet, it's gonna smash this wire and make it really tight. Uh, so the ring terminal will have a good connection to our rivet, which in turn will connect it to our grounding post there. So it's the same difference if you were to do it up here or back here, just whatever is easier. Uh, like I said though, because of our space, I am going to do it on the back side. So I'm gonna get that on there. Get this other one in. Probably just huck this one first to keep it in place. Now we can get our new power wire, our pigtail hooked up. So uh, with this, you can strip back the end of the insulation, which I have done. And this is gonna get connected to our existing power wire here using a buck connector. And while I'm doing this, I'm just gonna take another piece of wire I have laying around and put it in there as well. That way uh, I can redo my license plate and stuff too. So think about those little types of things when you're doing your wiring. You know, if you're gonna be doing other stuff while you're at it, you know, if you can do it all at once, and that's definitely the way. So we have our power wire for our light and then my extra one that I'll use later on for my license plate. I'm gonna twist these together and then put them in the butt connector. And we'll crimp it down. Get a good connection. I prefer these heat shrink butt connectors because uh, we can seal up the ends and uh, help prevent corrosion and things like that. So with that all done, I'll grab my heat source and get them sealed up. Now what we have left to do is just to take our light, plug the power wire into it, get this plugged into our housing here it's usually not this difficult this there's so much this undercoating on here it just makes everything so tight Plug this in though, you want to make sure it actually plugs into that grounding ring, which it did. It felt I mean, clearly it was super tight, but it's in there good. I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side of our trailer to replace that light, and then we'll come back and, and make sure they work. So I got the other side done, and now we'll check them. So I plug into a test box. You can also use your truck, but keep in mind if your truck has any issues, that could translate, make you think something's wrong with the wiring. But I'll go ahead and plug or turn on our test box and see that everything works. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Optronics Thin Line LED clearance and side marker light.